The Mush Tree Forest Biome is the place to be if one is looking for a high, a high count of mushrooms, that is. Found exclusively in the caves, this biome may actually branch into three separate biomes itself. Here, we see what is called the Mixed Mush Tree Forest. Next would be the Blue Mush Tree Forest, which is typically the biggest and most common there is. Then would come the Red Forest, which can be its own branch. Yes, however, patches of red mush tree biomes is usually pretty common as well. And lastly, likely the next biggest branch of them all is the green mush tree forest. And all these biomes may be similar in nature, sure. However, there is plenty different to go around. That said, they do all have mush trees, so let's start there. They give off constant natural light within these biomes and drop their corresponding mushroom colors as you can imagine. Blue mush trees give blue caps, red mush trees red caps, and green mush trees green caps. Easy enough. Unfortunately though, a single mushroom drop is all we can ever expect from these guys, no matter how big one tree might look over the others. Also, there is no way to actually plant more as the player. However, world regrowth will always spawn more, so you don't really have to worry about that one. Do note that you're just going to find natural mushroom spawns among all these biomes, again corresponding to color, but what's the best way to use them and munch them along the way? Well, uncooked blue caps are a phenomenal healing snack at 20 health a pop. Just watch that minus 15 sanity, however. Cooked green caps are a great sanity snack at plus 15 per munch. However, if one would like to go insane, actually, then just eating a raw green cap will grant minus 50 sanity. And finally, red caps are usually just filler for crockpot meals and vegetable ingredients when needed. That or can be used to just have fun in killing some mobs with that minus 20 health for raw red caps. Mushrooms also go into a select few crafts, usually locked behind toadstool and just the question of whether or not you should go ocean fishing. But whatever the case, mushrooms are amazing. So learn how to use them well. But considering that this is a biome guide, let's discuss what else we may find among all these mushroom trees. Cause light bulb plants are all dotted about these biomes. Although they are way more common in either the mixed mushroom forest or the blue mushroom forest. But there are four different variants of light flower all of which providing various amounts of light bulbs themselves. And of course, depending on the amount of bulbs per flower, it could take up to six days for more to spawn. And yes, these are actually renewable through world regrowth if something bad were to happen to them. But quickly now. Technically, one could eat light bulbs, but they're not going to do much for you. So for the most part, they go into creating lanterns and fueling said lanterns. But not only that, they can also refuel our miner hats. So they're pretty straightforward and quite important in the long run, obviously. And even though this has little to do with the mush tree forest themselves, just use a wear pig and light bulbs to produce a crap ton of crap when needed. But what else is there to say about the red mush tree forest in particular? Well, for whatever reason, it and its patches all around the caves attract cave spiders apparently. Numerous spalagmites will be scattered around the red mush, so be very careful. But also take advantage. Spalagmites offer a guaranteed fossil drop with a chance for double drops. And of course, you'll get minerals along the way. Plus, plenty of normal stalagmites could be around these biomes too. So there is even more minerals and fossils galore to be had. Green mush tree forests, on the other hand, are arguably the least worrisome as not much bad, if any at all, will even come knocking while you're in these. That said, what separates them from the rest is the inclusion of potential normal ponds like the ones up above. Usually, one would expect to be fishing eel down here, but with these, one can fish for normal fish without the concern for frogs at all, because it's technically always night in the caves. Could be useful. 
So take note and hook them gills. But let us return to the blue mush tree forest now, shall we? Within one, we could find a webbed blue mush tree like these guys here as well as potential webbing on the ground around them. These are home to Dangling Depth Dwellers, a cave-exclusive spider variant. If left unchecked, these webbed trees can randomly infect up to six others around them at a rate of one per day. And as you can see, things could get out of hand pretty quickly. Chopping one causes all nearby spiders to spawn, so be very mindful there. But for these guys, just think spider warriors just colored white for the most part, as they share both stats and attacks. Their loot is the same as well. So really all there is to say about all this is that these mush tree forests are not without their troubles, apart of course from the green one. These next two mentions are done hesitantly. Although it is very possible to stumble upon both slurtle mounds and depth worms within these biomes, the chance for such encounters are few and far between due to world generation being different for every single one of us out there. From experience, I can say that slurtle mounds are usually found on patches of mush tree forest near junctures closer to the wilds, but again, one may find one or two within a biome branch on occasion. And as for depth worms, if you see a glowberry in a mushroom forest, then chances are it's a freaking worm. We won't explore them much more here today, so head elsewhere for now. And another quick mention, because by golly, I feel like we've been talking about these things for three videos in a row. Big tentacles. They're big. They spawn little slappers to defend themselves, and they act as the wormholes of the caves. So have fun, and good luck locating the atrium through one of these slimy things. And truly, one of the last mentions would be their blooming seasons. During their specific seasons, these mush trees begin to bloom, producing spores of the corresponding color. Blue in winter, red in summer, green in spring. These spores can be caught via bug nets, but they don't last long, so catch them quick. Spores are really only used in two places. Glow caps to create colored light, and mushroom planters to yield the maximum amount of mushrooms possible per harvest. They may have limited use, but that second one is hugely important. Make note. And there you have it, everyone. The mush tree force of Don't Starve Together. World generations will vary, of course. However, these biomes certainly have more to them than mushrooms themselves. And they can and should play a huge role in your survival, especially if you plan on surviving down under for Pete's sake. So thanks for watching, folks. Well wishes to all. Stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.